Hi, my name's Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. Today I'd like to look again at our new texture mats that we've uh, been developing at Clarity. They are, they are going down a storm, everybody's loving them. And I wanted to just show you the last time what I did and what they look like and how they work. Um, let's just take a look, for example, at a couple of them. For example, this is one called Dots and Spots Grunge. I've blown it up a little bit. This is A6. Uh, you can see here, these are really fantastic. They're like instant backgrounds. And what's most exciting is there is a huge A5 one. I mean, this is blown up, of course. The A5 mat, if I dare compare, uh, is this size. So also substantial. And I want to show you, because when you look at something like this, you think, well, how am I ever going to get a picture out of that? What am I looking at? You'll be surprised. This is a particularly grungy one, which is why it comes under the grunge title. Then we've got uh, Nature, which is gorgeous. So obviously what you're looking at where it's dark, that is the stamp. And there's that big A5. That is unbelievably beautiful. Bear that one in mind when, I, when you're watching the technique I'm going to use today. I think that one will lend itself beautifully to this particular technique. And then here we've got this one, which is again a nature one. Look at that. So just bear that one in mind with today's technique. I was what my point here was I wanted to take the same one I did last time and show you a different trick so you can see, you know, different applications with the same design. So this one again is a rusted metal, very, very open and wild, absolutely amazing to use. Um, the purpose of these for mixed media artists and for stampers and fine artists alike, these create beautiful, instant, arty backgrounds. Uh, last time I was here, I showed you how you could create with a very neutral color in the background. I think this is called H Stucco, the artistry ink, how I created the background, then stamped straight onto it. No messing. And you still get some of that texture and pattern, the translucency peeping through the new flower stamp designed by Tina Cox. So that was, do, do check out, very easy, piece of cake. Um, and what I wanted to do today was take that same mat, which is this one, and inject some colour into it. Now let's have a look at some of the pieces that I've created here and I'll show you. This is all made, all these are made from this one mat and then just chopped. It's chopped. Chopped art. I love it. Um, you can then take this chopped art, for example, and you can... You can isolate and make notelets or you can montage, but really nice for chopping. So let me show you how this works. It's very, very easy, but really, really effective. We'll take a piece of copy paper so you can see what I'm doing. I've cleaned my stamp. And then what I'm going to do is take a piece of stencil card. That will do. Probably... Could have been a bit larger. We do a nine, nine by 11 size. We do the next size up for the big jelly plate. Might be worth looking at. And what we're going to do now, though, is don't have to treat it at all. We need a Versa mark. And what we're going to do is just ink up the entire um, texture mat. These are lovely. They really are. And you'll notice that I've mounted it on a... Um, on a piece of acetate. It's much, much better because it's so huge. We actually give you additional acetate for this job. Um, but the thing is, it's, it's the flexibility of it. Because of these huge stamps, it's easier on your wrists. Also, if you only want parts of it, you can roll in off the edge. There are lots of good reasons to use a, uh, a, a piece of acetate in instead of a... Um, mount. You finishing my sentence for me then. <laughs> anyway, so this is Versamark and what we're going to do is just just spread that out. If you like, you can take a brayer because this was, after all, the purpose of the brayer, just to transfer the ink. We're using the Versamark, just to recap. So it's that translucent, transparent, gloopy ink that you put powder to. Then we'll lift that off 
and you can see if you if you lift this off let me just show you I don't know if you can let me just check it's there myself yeah I've got enough I've got enough to do the job right could done with being a bit a bit more but this will do for now and then what we're going to do is we're creating a resist so wherever the powder oh, I've emptied the whole pot onto there wherever the powder catches the the wet Versamark, it will cling. See, and it's got it's got loads. So let me just take this off. It, it, you think you've used a whole pot, but in fact, you replace it all, you put it all back again. So we're just gonna make a little funnel. This is just clear powder, just bog standard clear embossing powder. It's a thermographic powder for those of you who are new to this stamping game. It's really cool. And uh, what it does is it creates like an enameled glaze, if you like, when you heat it. So I just want to tap it one more time to make sure I've got rid of all the excess. Clearly I should have been putting this back in the pot, but do you know what? This will do for today. Let me just check that I've got this right. There we go, this will be lovely. See, the more I tap this, the more it will fall off, the more paper is revealed, the more colour I can inject into it. So that's why I keep tapping it. But of course, I know, don't say anything. I should have put it in the pot, but I didn't. Okay, my rad, my rules. Right, there you go. So now I need to heat it. And what we're gonna do is just take a heat gun and heat it. Okay, so you can see I've embossed the whole thing. Where there's colour, that's because there was a little bit of ink on my on my grunge, on my stamping uh, texture mat. Um, and I've cut it back a little bit. I've just trimmed it to handle it better. And then what we're going to do now is apply some colour. Now, bearing in mind that what we've got here is actually a mask. What we've done is we're protecting this. So how do we do this? Let me show you. If I literally direct a paper, if I do this, then that will get inside. I probably need a makeup sponge and that will go in and that will stain the card in the background. Let me take another color that's more orangey so you see it better. And I'll go over the top. You watch this. Look, you see? Now I'll take my makeup sponge again. This is so easy. And what we're doing is, it, I mean, the at the moment, I you need to, go over it with a damp cloth or lick and spit, but um, you'll see in a minute what we're doing here. Now the rosy cheeks one, this one, this is gonna be in this area here. So I just wanna go in there like that. If you watch how it goes, it's mad how this works. And then you take your, I've got a makeup sponge for each color, I'm gonna use my spot on sponge. And then you just, you, when you wipe, you'll see it goes in all the little detailed areas like this. All right, and if you wanna get in tight, look, you take your makeup sponge and it will get right in there. Do you see the difference now? So you can get your core color down and then you just use your makeup sponge or your spot on sponge to get right in the detail. So now we've got our pinky area. I think we need another pinky area down here. These spot on sponges are great because they're latex and they don't crumble when you're Mind you, it's not really, it's very smooth. This, here we go, look. So you can make it, that will lighten when it dries. But you see how easily you can get these fantastic colours. I've got a blushing rose here as well. So we've got blushing rose, orange popsicle. Let's try the blushing rose just for an experiment and see how this goes. But you see how, this is so cool. Look, this is a bit dirtier, blushing rose. I mean dirty in the nicest possible way. It's a kind of a subtle colour. So we've got that yellow. I think I'll go with that blushing rose up there as well, just to... So it's like a batik really, because what we're doing is we're, we're introducing ink into the area that isn't covered by the... This is where you see the texture mat. The texture mat is all white, isn't it, where it's embossed. And how much ink you choose to add is entirely up to you. 
how dark, how dark you want it to go, what colours you want to use. That area looks as if it needs a bit of love. Let's have a look. See, even when you think there's nothing there, when you go in with a makeup sponge, even that really, really solid area has got a pattern in it. Let's have a look over here. Yeah, see? Brilliant, really. Right, I reckon you get it now. So what I want to do now is just, I need to wipe it just gently because it's not white enough yet. So let me get my colours out. I'm hanging on to my Adirondack Stream though, because this is the one that will just tie it all in. You watch. Now, I just need to, hang on, I'm just going in my handbag for a tissue. The last time I was wearing this top, I did a really nice, um, I did a really nice, did I show you this at the beginning of the hour? I think I did. I think I showed you at the beginning. I did a really nice um, background. I can't remember. But there you go. There it is if I didn't show you. I know, when you get to my age, you start to wonder. It all rolls into one. But this is the same, this is the same texture mat as that one, which is called uh, Spots and something. It's the, it's the grungy one. I'm sure that Simon will tell you later. Right. So it looks really cool, but how different it looks because now we're introducing colour. And then what I want to do, if nobody was watching, I would just... No, I better not. <laughs> I would just spit on the tissue. Didn't your mum used to do that with you? Right. And now, you see, when I wipe through here, what you'll see is the white embossing powder goes completely white again because we're getting rid of all the... The excess ink, the ink that I'm removing here is the ink that's on the, there you go. So we've whitened it now, we've lightened it. Okay, next step, let's get rid of those ink pads, they're cool. Let me give you that colour combo again. Blushing Rose, Haystack, Rosy Cheeks, Orange Popsicle, beautiful. Add to it a teal of some description. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Right, watch. So now what we want to do is chop it a bit. And what we'll do is we'll take our old trusty steed here and we'll just cut, we'll just cut away to the edge like this. So the other thing about this embossing um, powder, it cuts like butter. So when you cut through it, it makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. And now it's entirely up to you what you want to do. Let me just show you, let's do this one. I'm going to do like that. You can measure it, do what you like, can't you? You could do three, that sort of size. You could do little baby ones. You could do inchlets. Let's just do the, the one that's got the most colour in it. Right. And I want to show you how you can really bring this one to life now. Because it's not, I don't think it's quite done yet. You need a blending mat of some description. And then we need a teal. Um, I'll just grab this one because I love it. Right. Adirondack. Why do they discontinue Adirondack? Does anybody know? Okay, and then we're going to just load up one of our blending tools. Now, before I get excited and then wish that I tested it first, let's test it now. Right, let me just test it. Because you can always add it, but you can't take it away. Right, here we go. And now I'll start up the darker end. And what I'm going to do now is just start bringing in that turquoise. And what you'll see is that the tealy colour stream, as it goes through the orange and the red, it starts to change the colour. It's so cool. Look, and you do this to all your edges, you do this to all your edges. And as it hits like the, that, that blushing rose, what was it called? Blushing rose. It turns into a gorgeous blue colour. And what, let me just show you, just in case you're not aware of what I'm doing. I'm up on my haunches like this and I'm going round and round. But if you do it on paper, you've got no, you've got no slick. You need to do it on something like a, you know, like a piece of this, like a blending mat. And that will then, and you'll see as you go round, you get the most beautiful edging. Up on your haunches and small circular motions, and it will pick up all the colours. And then you take your, your damp cloth and you, see, when you wipe the, 
the embossing area again. In a minute, I'm going to have a green tongue. When you wipe the embossing area again. Okay, all right. Happy now? Right, and then when you do this, that goes really lovely and white. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? There you go, see? And that is just using, these will also go equally dramatic as soon as you add a touch of, look at the state of my hands. As soon as you add a touch of teal to the outside, that is what will happen. And you'll see here, all I've done, see when you add teal to orange, you get those greens, just gorgeous. And there we are. And that's how I arrived at that. And then all you do to create your little mini art pieces is you take your black edge, because again, it goes, it glides straight over the embossing powder. You just knuckle in, just tuck in. Don't hesitate. He who, he who divers, right? Just tuck in and then down you go. And it will go, it will glide straight over the embossed areas as well. There you go. Sharpie, I wish I had shares in that company. Well, and then you mount it on a piece of lovely whiteness and you've got yourself a really, really interesting piece of abstract art. I love them. So there you go. And that is just another technique using our, using our um, grunge texture mats. I think they're fantastic. This is just an A5, cut and chopped. How do I clean this? <laughs> you don't lick it. There you go. Paper towel, kitchen roll, wipe with water. Better than a baby wipe. Baby wipe clogs up the, the little pores. Uh, not so good. Water and a paper towel will do the job nicely. So. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed that little mixed media, arty, grungy journey. Very, I love these mats. I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of them. And um, go to our website, claritystamp.com. They're all on there. Uh, I blog every day, barbaragrayblog.com. And we've also got another blog, Clarity Matters, where you find out all about clarity and what we're up to on a weekly basis. They also blog daily. And, uh, and other than that, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.